Fronted by lead singer and 90s heartthrob Gavin Rossdale, Bush has sold millions of albums over the years and churned out some of the decade's biggest rock hits. But there's a lot more to this band than meets the eye. This is the untold truth of Bush. After graduating from high school in the mid-1980s, Gavin Rossdale became a regular in London's burgeoning dance club scene and soon formed a pop group of his own called Midnight. The two singles Midnight put out didn't get any radio or sales traction, however, and Rossdale didn't make any headway with any of his subsequent groups either. Finally, after meeting guitarist and fellow superfan of influential alternative rock group Pixies, Nigel Pulsford, he formed a pop rock group called Future Primitive. Before long, they had added drummer Robin Goodridge and bassist Dave Parsons, who had played in the controversial English glam rock band Transvision Band. Now all the group needed was a name, or a better name than Future Primitive at least. So the band went with Bush, which is short for Shepherd's Bush, the name of a London suburb where some of the band's members had once resided. Even after Future Primitive became Bush and the group found their sound, it took a long time for the band to release its debut album, owing to some corporate snags that the group actually had nothing to do with. Veteran talent manager Rob Gahane became acquainted with Bush in 1993, shortly after he stopped managing the pop superstar George Michael. He heard the band play a few songs and signed them to Trauma, his small upstart record label which had a distribution arrangement with Hollywood Records, a division of Disney. So Bush headed into the studio, and by early 1994, the group had fully completed recording their debut album, 16 Stone. And then tragedy struck when Disney executive Frank G. Wells died in a helicopter accident. As he was Kahane's closest advocate in the Disney corporate world, the manager and his bands found themselves all but expelled from Hollywood Records. Since these executives decided that 16 Stone wasn't a good enough album for commercial release, the members of Bush had to start working low-paying part-time jobs to pay the bills, hoping the album would one day see the light of day. Fortunately, Kahane found a home for both the band and the album at Interscope Records. 16 Stone went on to sell 6 million copies, and the members of Bush were finally able to quit their day jobs. Alt-rock enthusiasts of a certain age will remember Bush as one of the dominant bands of the genre from the mid-1990s to the early 2000s. Well, alt-rock fans from everywhere but Canada, that is. Because up in the Great White North, the group was known by a different name. See, a band's name is its brand, and as such, most groups file for a trademark. That's why you don't see hundreds of bands out there calling themselves the Beatles. Unfortunately for Rossdale & Company, a Canadian musician named Dominic Troiano had formed a band called Bush in the 1970s. As such, Troiano owned the Canadian territorial rights to use Bush as a band name. At the urging of his lawyer, Gavin Rossdale's grunge band had no choice but to pick a name just different enough from Bush to be legally compliant, but also close enough to Bush so Canadians would know it was the same band. The solution? For some of its earliest releases, Bush was known in Canada as Bush X. Triano and Bush eventually came to an agreement, however, and the latter, more famous Bush is now known by that name worldwide. The Nirvana sound was highly influential to countless bands of the 1990s, and Bush is no exception. In fact, the band's similarities to Cobain's power trio were a little too much for some people, and the group was frequently and unfavorably compared to Nirvana. So how did the members of Bush respond? Rossdale once told Rolling Stone, A lot of people want to guard Kurt Cobain's estate, and I appreciate that, but what we're doing isn't a crime. I hope there's something of Nirvana in Bush, in the same way that there was a massive element to the Pixies in Nirvana. In an interview with Guitar World in 1997, Bush guitarist Nigel Pulsford dismissed the criticism entirely. He said, There are a million Nirvana sound-alike bands. If we really wanted to sound like Nirvana, we could get a lot closer. When it came time to record the band's second album, Razorblade Suitcase, Bush didn't seem to care about the Nirvana knockoff label anymore. The group almost invited the criticism, hiring as its producer Steve Albini, a studio wizard known for his work with indie bands, punk acts, and Nirvana's 1993 album, In Utero. If you're in a band, the important thing is you make the music you want to make and you do it how you want to do it. In January 2002, founding Bush guitarist Nigel Pulsford announced on Bush's website that he was temporarily quitting the band, foregoing touring to stay at home with his wife, who was at the time pregnant with their son. A few months later, however, Pulsford claimed to undercover that he had wanted to leave much earlier and that he was ultimately fired anyway. Pulsford said, The decision was taken out of my hands when I was sacked six days after the birth of my son. I tried to quit in September when there were complications during my wife's pregnancy, and I didn't see how I could continue, but I'd been persuaded to carry on by getting a temporary replacement for the U.S. tour. In other words, it wasn't a happy split. Pulsford's temporary substitute, former helmet guitarist Chris Trainer, became his permanent replacement. But that didn't last long either. Finally, Rossdale disbanded Bush in 2002. Three years later, Rossdale re-emerged with a band called Institute. This new group produced Distort Yourself, a commercial flop that would turn out to be the band's only album. Rossdale's sole solo effort, Wonderlust, sold fairly well, and the single Love Remains the Same hit the top 30, but the singer couldn't escape his past. 
In 2010, he reformed Bush, albeit without Pulse Forward or bassist Dave Parsons. You're working on a new record? Yes. So tell me... I just came from the studio now and um, sang 11 songs in. Bush's new album, The Kingdom, releases July 17, 2020. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite bands are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.